the Ohio State University of Marion, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 41st Annual Academic Recognition Program for the Ohio State University of Marion. This premier event in our academic year closes the 55th year of Ohio State courses being offered in Marion and 44 years on our beautiful campus. It also marks the last of the quarters that the university will be on beginning summer. We'll be moving to semester, so that's another transition, another change for all of us. Before we jump into the program, a few items of housekeeping. First, for everyone's enjoyment this evening, please silence your cell phones. Next, I have a few notes of appreciation. I want to thank the Palace Theater for graciously holding this evening's event again this year, and Angela Corbetta for providing this evening's music on the Palace Theater Board. I want to recognize the members of the Ohio State University of Marion's Board of Trustees who are attending this evening. They help guide the campus and show their support for Ohio State Marion in many ways. Trustees members, please stand so we may recognize them. Thank you. I also want to recognize Vice President and Dean Emeritus John Mount, a longtime administrator at Ohio State and a great friend of the regional campuses. He is in the audience this evening. Thank you for coming. As you will hear, a number of the awards this evening have donors' names associated with them. Some of those donors or their family members are with us this evening. Would those who are here please rise so we may show our appreciation for your generosity. I want to thank Chris Trapp and Amy Erickson and all the staff and faculty who have put in many hours of work and I suspect a few hours of worry considering the accomplishments of the students who have been nominated for honors, reviewing class essays and creative work submitted for awards, and organizing and preparing for this evening's program. I also want to recognize the faculty and staff of Ohio State Marion who are here this evening. Some will be presenting awards. All are here to help honor our students' accomplishments. Our faculty and staff are dedicated to providing the very best university education possible through their roles as teachers, as advisors, and as helpers in all the complex activities needed to make a university function. With the faculty and staff in the audience, please rise so we may recognize you. Thank you. Finally, I especially want to thank the family members and friends who come this evening to celebrate and support the academic achievements of you, of your, and our students. Just last week, President Gordon B. was in Marion, reminding us of the one university that is Ohio State and of our continued rise to the very top of higher education institutions in the United States. Only six campuses of the Ohio State University are found worldwide, and one of them is right here in this community. Our mission is to bring a top flight higher education experience to this area with Ohio State faculty and Ohio State staff for Ohio State students. From 1957 through today and into the future, Ohio State Marion benefits from the tremendous support of the community and from achieve the achievements of students as we continue to grow and improve. During the year, the academic achievements of our students are recognized in many ways, such as when faculty congratulate them on especially fine tests or paper, or when they are reviewing their progress with an academic advisor, or when they receive a dean's list letter. But in tonight's program, we recognize our students' achievements and accomplishments publicly in the presence of their family and friends. So now let's turn to the real focus of the evening, the students, as we recognize and honor them with awards for their superior academic achievements and recognize students who've received Associate of Arts degrees. To get us underway, it's my pleasure to introduce and turn the program over to Professor John Meharry, whose day job is teaching mathematics. But this evening, he'll be our MC, and he'll be carrying the awesome responsibility of holding everything together and keeping us on task. Thank you. Good evening. 
Good evening to the deans and to the trustees, the faculty and the staff who are gathered here tonight. And especially good evening to the students whom we're honoring tonight, as well as to their families and their friends who are here to support them. Welcome to the 41st Annual Academic Recognition Program here at Ohio State Marion. This is, as Dean Rose said, the evening where we public re publicly recognize the students and other individuals who, through their high scholastic achievements, personify the concept of academic excellence and bring great honor to the university. As Dean Rose mentioned also, I am Dr. John McGarry, Professor of Mathematics, and it's my pleasure to honor, and it's my pleasure and honor to welcome you this evening um, to this evening of public recognition of the outstanding achievements of our Ohio State Marion students. Before we begin, I wanted to point out a couple things too. The first row of seats down at the, in the front um, have been left unoccupied, so if at any time you wish to come down to take pictures, feel free to do so. Tonight's a night I look forward to every year. Tonight exemplifies many of the strengths of our campuses, of our campus. The pursuit of excellence, the drive to achieve our goals, and the spirit of community. Over the past year, our campus has undergone two significant changes. The new partnership with the Columbus State in Delaware, and the upcoming move to semesters. And while these have caused quite a bit of stress and anxiety, they've also given us an opportunity to reevaluate what we do and look to the future. And while there have been many changes, it's also important to remember all the things that will stay the same. The hard work and talent of our students, the dedication and expertise of our faculty and staff. And many of you chose to come to this campus over larger campuses for the better opportunity to work closely with the faculty or the smaller classes. And that's another thing that's not going to change. And it's also important to note that the faculty chose to come to this campus for the same reasons. We wanted to work at a smaller campus. We wanted to have more community with our students. We wanted to get to know the students better. And that small community is what makes this evening even more special. To see our students, who we've seen grown over the years and work so hard to develop their talents, to see them re receive the recognition and accolades that they have earned. And it's those talents and hard work and accomplishments that we honor here tonight. So thank you and let's get on with the awards. To begin with, I'd like to introduce Dr. Zuhair Aladim, who will present our first awards for the evening. Good evening. It's my pleasure to be here this evening to present the International Travel Study Awards. We are recognizing students who have traveled abroad during the past academic year. Our campus offered students two opportunities to study abroad in the past year. Last spring break, I led a group of students on a study tour to Budapest, Vienna, Prague, and Munich. Students who participated in this experience are listed in your program. I invite them to the stage at this time. Molly Davis, Erin Darla, Jeffrey Gossip, Sierra Harper, Maryam Hilalad, Salman Ludwig, Good. I'm sorry, Sandra Spangler. Swagner, <laughs> Melissa Lester. I was so fortunate to be part of this experience with such a great group. I'm very sure everyone benefited from uh, this educational tour, and I encourage all of the students to take advantage of this travel study opportunity next year to Spain. Uh, during summer quarter 2011, a group of Master of Education students traveled to Chile with Dr. Mario Fresh. All of the students who participated in, this, in that trip are listed in your program. These students graduated in autumn quarter and have joined the teaching 
profession. With us this evening is Caitlin Ray Flashbock to receive recognition for participating in this global experience. Caitlin. I would like to introduce Dr. Chris Dennis to present the next award. doing so, I'm usually confronted with two consistently asked questions. The first one is, what do I have to do to be in the honors program? And the second is, why in the world would I want to do that? <laughs> the consistency of these responses is amazing. I should get used to it by now, but I'm not. It's very similar to the consistency in response that I get when I tell people what I do. And you psych majors or psych professors can back me up. When you tell someone what you do, the first question is, are you analyzing me? <laughs> we always say no, but... <laughs> and the other one is, actually I tell them, I really don't work in abnormal psychology, I work in adolescent parent conflict, and so the second question is, will you come to my house? <laughs> but back to honors. The first question, what do I have to do? And I do tell them, I have a response, it's you are to engage in an academic pro uh, program that challenges you one that has breadth and depth in your major, one that challenges you outside of the classroom and in. And you are to meet and exceed these expectations. In short, you're supposed to work your butt off. And then, many students understandably respond, why would I do that? And in responding to this, I do have a canned answer. It's about employers, potential graduate schools, transcripts, programs, and a nice warm feeling of accomplishment. But luckily, there's also another group of students who give a different response. They don't ask, why should I do it? They ask, why, where do I sign up? And how do I go about doing it? And these are the students in our honors program right now. This year, I'm proud to say that we have 20 students who have signed up for our honors program, and they have chosen to pursue their degree in the honors and ask them to work their butts off. The Howard Honors Scholarship was created to recognize these most engaged and motivated students in the group of our most engaged and engaged and motivated students. This year, two students from a group of really great students are here to be recognized with a scholarship, a scholarship that is worth $1,000. These students have shown themselves to be model honor students. They stood out among our best and brightest by effectively using our campus resources and interacting with their coursework and with their fellow students and professors in a highly intellectual way. This year, from a pool of highly qualified nominees, our selection committee has chosen to recognize Gretchen Elizabeth Fogel, Recipient, and it seems that you won this last year, John C. Ando. Congratulations. <laughs> Psychology to present the next award. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
One of the uh, ways that honor students can get involved is to write a senior honors thesis. That sounds pretty easy, except it's a year and a half to two year project. It involves the student coming up with an idea, going down three or four blind alleys, going back, restarting, trying again and again and again until they get just the perfect idea. Then they have to do a literature search that takes probably a quarter or two and revise, revise, revise. Then they're ready to propose a research scholarly project. That has to be presented to the honors uh, department down in Columbus. They approve it. The student then works with a faculty member to develop a, uh, a design for a research study, sets it up, collects the data, analyzes the data, writes up a report, probably about 14 times, then uh, has to defend it uh, uh, in front of a panel of faculty, and then uh, often go down to the Denman uh, Honors Day in Columbus. This year's uh, uh, senior honors thesis was by Gretchen Elizabeth Vogel. Would you come up? And while she's coming up, I wanted to uh, I had to tell you how I met her. First day of classes four years ago, she's standing in the hallway kind of looking around. I asked her where she was going and she told me, I said, oh, that's my honors introductory psychology class. It's right up there. We get up there, she uh, sits down in the front row, and I pass out the syllabi for all the students, and she's sitting in the front row. She didn't know that she was supposed to take the syllabus and give it to the person behind her. Uh, she was homeschooled, and when she first came to campus, she was rather shy. Since then, she has become a student leader, president of the Psychology Club, co-president of the Griffin Honor Society, and involved in a wide variety of activities. We're especially proud of her as a psychology major. Dr. Tracy Tilka, uh, also in the psychology department, to uh, present the next award. Hello. <laughs> um, it is my honor to uh, present the three students who have excelled in honors classes. Um, this, is, this award is made possible by uh, Mr. Ralph Howard and Mrs. Joanne um, Howard uh, Hoffman. And uh, what the procedure is, oh, my things. <laughs> what the procedure is, is that faculty um, can choose up to three students from their honors classes to nominate for this award. And tonight we do have three students um, in three honors, different honors classes receiving this award. Um, these students will receive a certificate and a $200 cash award, which will be applied towards tuition for their next uh, semester of enrollment. And each student also will receive a book that uh, is applicable to their discipline of the course. Um, and I invite the award recipients uh, to the stage at this time. Um, Ryan Geiger, uh, Emily Sexton, and Melissa uh, Reddick. Uh, Ryan is recognized for his performance in English 110, uh, the honor section, uh, first year English composition, uh, under the direction of Professor Nathan Wallace. And Ryan is receiving a copy of Norton Shakespeare. Congratulations. Uh, Terry Pettijohn has identified Melissa Lynn Reddick, an outstanding uh, student who is uh, enrolled in his Psychology 100 Honors General Psychology course. 
and she will be receiving a copy of Carol Dweck's book entitled Mindset, The New Psychology of Success. Right, congratulations. And uh, finally, as the instructor of psychology through 3D1 um, honors, the, honors the abnormal psychology, I would like to congratulate Emily Maya Sexton, um, who will also be receiving the book, uh, Psychology, um, The Mindset, A New Psychology of Success. Uh, it is now my pleasure to introduce to you uh, Stuart LaShawn and Ben McCorkle uh, from the uh, Department of English to present the Creative Writing Awards. Woo! Good evening. Gift cards out here. We have a set up. We have a set up. And I have a quotation. Okay, my sure. Uh, this is my wand every year. I troll the internet looking for a good quotation. It has to do with writing to kind of help contextualize it. Uh, this year I found uh, one from Jeff Millette. He's a cartoonist. You might know him from the extraordinarily mediocre comic strip Frass. No? Okay, no. <laughs> the quote is good though. It, writing well means never having to say. I guess you had to be there. In other words, <laughs> it's good, right? It puts you in a time, it puts you in a place, it puts you in a moment. And good writing does that, and that's what we're here to award today. One of our strengths in the English at the uh, Marion campus is we have excellent faculty in writing, besides uh, wonderful faculty and, and, and who teach classes in professional writing and academic writing. We also have creative writing classes to support the community we um, have a visiting writer series, uh, students put together a wonderful creative writing magazine called Cornfield Review, um, and we have, a creative, we have a reading series uh, as well where students read. Um, we have creative writing awards uh, in creative nonfiction, fiction, and poetry. Um, first prize is a $100 gift certificate to Barnes & Noble, second prize is a $50 gift certificate, and third prize is a $25 gift certificate. Uh, to Barnes and Nobles. Um, so I guess without further ado, we'll uh, we'll start announcing the winners in the various categories. The winners, please make their way to the stage, please. Um, so the first category is fiction, and in third place, uh, Rachel Shade with her piece Chained. Second place. <laughs> second place, Brittany Violet Long with her piece Along the Saddle Shore. And first place is Danielle Wolf with her piece Champion. In poetry, third place goes to Sierra Lacombe. Second place goes to Timothy Allen Giles for his poem, Attic Letters. And first place goes to Jennifer Miller for her poem, Random Shuffle. Nonfiction. Um, there is one winner, uh, first place, uh, Sheree Benita Whitlock for her piece, The Story of an Unlikely Savior. Um, I asked uh, Jennifer Miller to stay up here to read her poem. Um, a bit of uh, uh, back, background about this uh, particular poem. In my winter quarter English 547 20th century poetry class is a way of 
helping students enter a rather uh, challenging poem, T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland, uh, which is a collage, a pastiche of elements of high and low culture. I ask students to uh, come up with a, a, a little piece of their own, uh, a compendium of snippets of popular culture. Um, Jennifer's piece was so good in one first place in this year's creative writing contest and poetry. Random shuffle. Energize your life. Dream on. Get her done. Shed pounds, they say. But how can you with the whopper staring you in the eyes? McDonald's, too. I mean, I'm loving it. <laughs> Walmart is king. Dynamite. I mean, come on. Save money, live better. Don't miss a single rollback or special offer. Trust me, you don't see many people leaving that store with nothing. <laughs> Chevy runs deep, but I'd rather be cruising in my fusion, baby. They say, have your dessert and chew it too. How cool is that? You mess with the bull, you get the horns. No exceptions, all right? It just may be a lunatic you're looking for, now available on Kindle Fire. <laughs> I was born on the same day as Tom Cruise. Can you believe it? Oh my word, I want to go out with you. It's not about following your heart, and it's not about keeping your promises. It's about security. Security, like barbecue, so grilled, you'll want to wipe the sauce off your face. <laughs> Let's go Giants, sweet escape. Gonna take it right into the danger zone. Innovation for the planet, innovation for all. So this is a new award. This is the first year we've given it out. It's the OSU Marion Digital Media Composition Award. Uh, partly this is uh, recognition that we are in fact in the 21st century and that the shape of writing is changing and, and, and it often employs different modes, uh, not just black marks on a white page, not that there's anything wrong with that. But, uh, but, but interesting uh, combinations of video, audio, animation, uh, still graphics, uh, along with text. And so this is an attempt to kind of recognize the kind of work that uh, goes on on our campus. Uh, so people doing work uh, in conjunction with classes, uh, clubs, etc. It's, it's kind of a very uh, open-ended contest. So the winner of this year's award is Deborah Lynn Knoll. Uh, A, uh, a trilogy of short uh, Hitchcock-inspired pieces uh, entitled Debt Free, Interrogation, Cloud, and Justice. Uh, and my understanding is that we, uh, I've been told, we have uh, an excerpt from one of those to show. So we
Many of the students you see, whether they complete their degree here in Marion or in Delaware, or transfer to the Columbus campus to complete their coursework, they've excelled in the classroom. They've gone above and beyond their requirements, and they've pushed themselves further than they thought they could academically. As you've seen, a lot of them have done fantastic creative writing. They've made short movies. They've um, competed in and won awards at the Denman Undergraduate Research Competition. Others have done independent research and honors theses. Others have gone all over the world and study tours. It's amazing the amount of things that we've done on this campus. And the students there, in part, are driven by the example of the faculty. The mem members of the faculty here at Marion are all known and respected around the world for their research in their respective disciplines. They've written many books and published numerous articles in the top journals in their fields. Some of their research has been written about in the national media, the New York Times, Newsweek, things like that. Others have been invited to speak at conferences all around the world. They're engaged, active members of their research communities. And tonight, as the year ends, we'd like to honor four of the OSU Marion faculty who will be retiring at the end of this quarter. And I think we have pictures. Thank you. First is Dr. Frank Proagno from the Department of Comparative Studies. Also Dr. Rhoda Becker from the Department of Education. Dr. Richard Bradley from the Department of EEOB, Evolution, Ecology, Organismal Biology. And Dr. Terry Menson, Department of Earth Science. As a group, these four faculty have been teaching at OSU Marion for 106 years. <laughs> They've taught more or less 742 courses between them to over 18,500 students. That's a lot of final exams. <laughs> and they've won among them three of the prestigious university-wide alumni awards for distinguished teaching. They've published nearly 100 research articles in scholarly journals, and they've written seven books in the respective areas of expertise. We at OSU Marion have been fortunate to have such dedicated and ta talented faculty on our campus, and they will be missed. So please join me in applauding them for their many years of service to our campus. <laughs> now I would like to introduce Dr. James Genova, the History Department, to announce the next awards. present the Oliver E. Hamilton History Awards on behalf of the History Program at The Ohio State University Marion Campus. The Oliver E. Hamilton History Awards are made possible through a generous endowment made by one of our former students, Oliver E. Hamilton, to the History Program on OSU's Marion Campus for the purpose of recognizing the achievements of some of our brightest and most accomplished students. As a result of his generosity, each year we present three awards. One for the history major graduating with the highest GPA, one for the best paper written in an upper division uh, course, and one for the best paper or essay written in a lower level course. We are very proud as a program to be able to offer the major and minor in history from matriculation to graduation on the Marion campus. Every year, our faculty members have the privilege of meeting and teaching hundreds of the best and most interesting students in the Ohio State University system. At the end of each academic year, the history faculty members at OSUM nominate the papers or essays they believe represent the best work done by a student in all of their classes during that year. We read the works that have been nominated and voted for the one we believed the most deserving in the relevant categories. The winner of the History Major Award is determined by GPA and academic standing. In all instances, the decisions are difficult as we have so many deserving candidates. Each award recipient receives a certificate. In addition, the recipients of the awards for the best lower and upper division papers will receive $200, and the winner of the Oliver Hamilton History Award will receive $300. The winners this year for the Oliver E. Hamilton History Award, Cynthia Renee Lavis. Thank you. 
she was able to make it this evening. Uh, she is also the winner in the Upper Division History course for the best paper. Her paper titled How San Francisco Emerged from the 19th Century was written in History 598 with Professor Derek Peng. That is our senior capstone paper. So Cynthia Labus winning two of our three awards this year. Our final winner this evening, the winner in the Lower Division History uh, for the best essay or paper in the Lower Division History course, uh, for the paper Women on the Silk Road, written in History 341, uh, which is the Silk Road class taught by Dr. Derek Hang, is Lauren Ainsley Miller. At this point, I would like to introduce Dr. Nathan Wallace from the English Department to present the next award. Good evening. The Babbage Writing Award is sponsored by the Honors Program here at LSU Marion and is given in memory of Mr. Robert and Mrs. Marilyn Babbage, in whose names the initial funding was given to establish the Marion Campus Honors Fund. Each year, professors submit outstanding student essays to the award committee for consideration. The award winners received $200 applied toward their next quarter's tuition. We are actually giving two, we actually give two awards. One is for the best paper written by a freshman or sophomore, and the uh, second essay is written, uh, is, is to one, uh, second uh, award is to uh, an essay written by a junior or a senior. In the freshman sophomore category, the winner is Emily Jane Jean Smock for a paper written in Abnormal Psychology 331 with Dr. Chris Dadis. The paper is titled, does mobile phone uh, use predict happiness and self-esteem in adolescence? In the junior and senior category, Callie Jeanette Brannell is the award winner for her essay on the process of engagement. Uh, written for English uh, 547 with Dr. Stuart LeShawn. <laughs> next, I'd like to introduce Dr. Richard Bradley to present the next award in biology. sequence, the equivalent sequence in the biology program that uh, offers this award in the chemistry program. The CRC Press Freshman Chemistry Award is given to the outstanding student who has completed the three course sequence in chemistry, 121, 122, 123. Uh, this year, uh, Dr. Turner chose a student who has earned all A's in each of these courses and according to Dr. Turner, is the strongest student in the chemistry sequence this year. The award recipient is Travis Glenn Blanton.
Travis will be standing here for just a moment longer, and Krista Eister I'd like to invite to come up and join him, and they're going to present the next award. Well, I'm sure I'll find a use for that. <laughs> There's a lot in there. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Travis Bland, and I'm one of the three co-presidents of the Griffin Honor Society. The other two are Gretchen Fogel and Tamara Bland. Griffin is a student organization that prides itself on creating academic and intellectual experience for everyone, not just exclusively honor students. Each year, the Griffin Honor Society presents this award to recognize superior undergraduate teaching by a student or a senior lecturer, lecturer, instructor, or teaching associate, associate at Ohio State Marion. This year, our selection committee surveyed the Ohio State Marion student body to elicit nominations. I would now like to introduce a fellow member of Griffin and the future president of the Griffin Honor Society, Krista Eister, to share a few excerpts that the students shared about this year's winner. This teacher is a person who doesn't strive merely to teach. They're students, but to learn from them. There's a feeling of something not only being taken away by the students after each course is finished, but of having imparted something of worth as well. Knowledge is a living, breathing entity in the, this teacher's class. You can reach out and touch it, feel it grip you, and motivate you and inspire you. There is something different in this teacher's teaching that they believe in their students and their subject. When someone is passionate about what they are doing and confident in who they are, the message they are communicating becomes far more meaningful to all who listen. Try to capture Try to try and capture the heart of all that this teacher is and all that they give to their students is an impossible task. What words can hold the feeling behind their teaching? What sentence can contain the depth of all that they bring to their classroom? The best definition for this teacher is no definition. Not only because they are beyond the measure of words, but because they would never want to be confined by a term that limits them or their students. Nothing can defy knowledge, through knowledge we can change, and through change we can become all we are meant to be. There is no greater supporter of that or more deserving teacher than this. I know him personally and I love him as my own. I would like to announce the winner of the 2012 Griffin Honor Society Teaching Award as Dr. Scott Fisher. At this time, I would like to invite Dr. Katie Braun from the English Department to the stage for the presentation of the Grand Campus Teaching Excellence Award. I'm honored to be here tonight to present the Marion Campus Teaching Award. This is a new award established last year by the faculty of the Marion Campus to recognize excellence in teaching. This is the first year it is being presented. During autumn quarter, faculty, staff, and students were invited to nominate faculty for the award. There were a total of nine nominees. Six submitted a packet consisting of a teaching philosophy statement, sample syllabi, and student evaluations. The committee, Derek Hang, Jeff Turner, Linda Parsons, and myself, then set to the daunting task of evaluating the nominees. All six of the nominees are excellent teachers, each more than deserving of the award. Because of this, the committee wanted to take a few moments to recognize each of them. So in alphabetical order, here are the nominees. 
Gordon Albright has been teaching physics at the university level since 1973, teaching over 300 physics courses in his career. Initially trained in theoretical physics, Gordon has over the years shifted his focus towards physics education. He has published at least 40 academic articles and book chapters, as well as several textbooks on the topic. He has also been responsible for a program in the Marion City School District, facilitating middle and high school teachers' development of tactile learning environments. He is passionate about teaching physics and uses an inquiry-based pedagogy, helping students learn how to learn. He helps students develop their problem-solving abilities, challenging them to think for and learn from themselves. Donna Babazair has wanted to be a teacher since she was in kindergarten. In her teaching philosophy, she described lining up any audience she could find, quote, family members, stuffed animals, the goldfish, and, toilet, and proceeding to teach them what she had been learning in school. She wrote, there is nothing more rewarding as a teacher as seeing those moments of realization in students' eyes when they grasp that sociological tools can help them understand their own lives as well as provide impetus for attempting to influence the greater society. It is clear that Donna strives to create a superior educational experience for students. She values the connection between teaching and research, learning about the breadth of her field in order to improve her teaching. She also says she considers her teaching a work in progress. She continually reassesses her teaching with the goal of improving the educational experience for students. One student comment sums up the way students consistently evaluate Donna's teaching. Professor Babitzer is an excellent teacher. She is passionate about the material and has a real desire to help everyone understand the concepts presented. Brenda Cheney is a faculty member in the Sociology Department at OSU Marion. Like many of you, she was a first-generation college student. In her teaching philosophy, she wrote that remembering her experiences informs her pedagogy. Because sociology as a discipline covers many controversial topics, Brenda emphasizes theory and research in her classes to encourage critical thinking, to help students learn to marshal evidence for their claims, and to create an inclusive learning environment where multiple viewpoints are considered. Students consistently describe her courses as engaging, well-organized, and interesting. It is clear from course evaluations that she has an ability to connect with students through imaginative and exciting discussions. Mike Laurie is one of our veteran English teachers at OSU Marion. He uses his enthusiasm for writing to create an interactive learning environment that students consistently praise with comments such as, he instills a desire to learn within his students. He helped me become a much better writer. He makes sure you work toward your grade and earn it. It's not just given to you. He makes the class feel like a community. Mike is a great professor who truly cares about students. He makes me want to learn. In his teaching philosophy, Mike wrote that, among other goals, he wants students to understand the power of language to change their lives and to experience the mystery and power of writing as art. Terry Pettijohn has been teaching psychology at the university level for over 40 years. Completely committed to the well-being and advancement of OSU Marion, Terry has served on and chaired numerous committees directly responsible for the betterment of student achievements, including such committees as honors opportunities, academic standards, and senior academic recognition <coughs> selection committee. He has also been the recipient of numerous teaching awards at both the college and university levels at OSU. In their evaluations, students have consistently expressed their conclusion that they learned a lot through his classes. His courses are deemed to have been practical, informative, and relevant. He is regarded as being willing to help and is very innovative in using, using multimedia to reinforce his key points and to provoke further thought. Terry's commitment to his teaching mission is also reflected in the designing and authoring of a large body of materials for the teaching of psychology, such as multimedia materials, textbooks, teaching guides, and computer simulation programs. Finally, Tracy Tilka teaches a range of psychology classes at OSU Marion. In order to promote student learning, she creates a supportive and stimulating classroom experience, encourages critical thinking, uses a variety of teaching modalities and examples to illustrate psychological phenomena, and facil facilitates the students' application of course material to their personal experiences. Tracy has high expectations for students, evidenced by the fact that many of her honor students, 
excuse me, many of the honor students who have worked with her have presented their research at national conferences and published their work in peer-reviewed academic journals. In their evaluations, students consistently describe her as caring and helpful and her classes as interesting and useful. <coughs> students consistently praise the learning environment Tracy creates in class and state that being able to relate course concepts to their personal experiences made it easier to learn. Clearly, all of the nominees have a passion for and a commitment to teaching, and they are all excellent teachers. I think they all deserve a round of applause. I have two awards to give out, one for non-tenure track faculty and one for tenure track faculty. The recipients will receive an individual plaque and certificate, and will also have their names engraved on a permanent plaque that will be on display on campus. So each recipient should come up to collect your certificate when I announce your name. The award for teaching excellence among non-tenure track faculty goes to Mike Lori. Award for Teaching Excellence among Tenure Track Faculty goes to Donna Bobbitt-Zayer. One of the most important aspects of the Ohio State University of Marion is our connection to the community. In fact, service to the community is at the core of our campus mission. Service was one of the founding principles when the Ohio State Regional Campuses were begun more than 50 years ago. And as a campus, we are in turn blessed with a number of individuals from the community who provide many valuable services to our campus. And in that spirit of service, I would like to welcome to the stage Mr. Stephen Keene, Chair of the Ohio State Marion Board of Trustees, to present the Ralph Howard Service Award. <laughs> Good evening, students, faculty, and family. On behalf of the Merritt Campus Board of Trustees, I'm here to present the Ralph Howard Service Award. Each year, the Board of Trustees select individuals that have contributed to the development of academic programs, honor programs, and have made a significant impact on the quality of education at The Ohio State University of Marion. This year's recipients are Mr. and Mrs. George and Evelyn Gary. to benefit the Ohio State Marion students majoring in education, engineering, and business. They have, they have contributed to the construction of the Maynard Hall and were major supporters of the new student lounge in the Morrill Hall. Evelyn has been a member of the Buckeye Backers since it was started in 1996, and in her spare time she has used her sewing talents in making costumes, keyboard covers, and gray vests for the university. I am very honored to award George and Evelyn on their outstanding and unique contributions toward the ongoing success and growth of the Ohio State University at Marion and its students. They have played a special role in the rich history of our campus, and again, congratulations to the both of you. At this time, we would like to recognize the Ohio State Marion students who have received their bachelor's degree this past year. While the official graduation ceremonies are in Columbus, we would like to recognize you for your hard work and efforts and congratulate all of you. 
In your program, you'll find a listing of all of the Marion Campus students who have already received this degree this academic year. And in addition to those listed, many Marion students will be receiving their bachelor's degree in just a couple weeks. Following that listing in the program, you'll see, also see a list of students who have graduated with a master's in education in the past year. Students have earned an MED, have completed over a year of graduate work to acquire their teaching license after their undergrad. <coughs> so if you've received one of these degrees in the past year, or hope to in a couple weeks, please stand so we can recognize you. There should be quite a few of you. those awards. First, let me explain uh, what are the criteria for this Academic Excellence Awards. Number one is the attainment of a minimum quarterly GPA of 3.5 for the previous three quarters. Then number two is completion of at least 25 hours on the Marion campus at the end of winter quarter. After this, the students tend to be divided in four categories, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. Rank at the beginning of the autumn quarter 2011 determines student category. Up to two students are chosen as the winners in each of the four categories. My committee was responsible for choosing the winners in the freshman, sophomore, and junior categories. Once student eligibility is determined, faculty eliminate deserving students. Students then must prepare application packet that consists of two letters of recommendations from the faculty, a personal statement, and other evidence of outstanding academic work. The students who completed these steps were considered for the award and are listed in your program. On my committee, there was another member of mathematics department, Yan Lang, and he was very instrumental in helping out to figure out who would be the winners. And hopefully, because uh, I'm from social behavior, approach and he's more from the science, uh, mathematics. Hopefully we came up with the most balanced uh, way of looking at the winners. After reviewing the letters of recommendation for the nominees, uh, we found that there were common themes emerging in the letters uh, of recommendations. For example, students would, uh, would be written that uh, they perform well on exams, uh, that they deserve to be recognized for hard work and growth, has good analytical skills and challenges the professor and the others he reads. With the addition of his thoughtful and humorous comments, our class discussions are always more engaging for students. Often takes a leadership role in class as well as with the colleagues as they work on group projects and other collaborative efforts. Does not shy away from challenging courses. Is a left brain and a right brain thinker who dazzles the peers with know-how and knowledge asked smart questions, participated in class discussions, and was very industrious student overall. In addition to <laughs> academic qualities, there are also other qualities that uh, were obvious from this letter. For example, mentioning the students are charismatic and able to capture attention, motivate the group members. Uh, were among the select group of students whom I considered mature and established, maintained high grade point despite having several personal issues always in class, always prepared, always positive about the assignments and willing to help other students, very involved in student life on campus. The winners in each of these categories will receive a plaque among the $200 that will be applied to their next semester's tuition. In the freshman category, more than 65 students met the eligibility requirements. 11 students were nominated for the award by faculty. Five students submitted application material and were considered for this award. Please stand when your name is read. Isa Robert Buzian, Andrew William Clements, Samantha Ray Sacrist, Emily Jean Smock, Sandra Key Spangler. Deliberation. 
situation and it was quite heated one, although throwing tables and chairs would have been difficult over Skype. <laughs> we have determined one winner for the freshman category. And the winner is Samantha Ray Sagrist. met the eligibility requirements, 10 students were nominated for the award by faculty, and 7 students submitted application material and were considered for the award. Again, please stand when your name is read. John Ando, Tamara Mary Blanton, Travis Glenn Blanton, Ashia Marie Carrera, Patty Sue Sheets, Matthew Christian Weber, Christopher Michael Wild. Now we can go. We chose two winners for this category, and the winners are Travis Glenn Blanton, and Christopher Michael Wild. submitted application material and were considered for the award. Persistence is important and going through all of the steps is important as well. Uh, please stand when your name is read. John Christopher Corvo, Randy, Randy Faye Hilt, Robert Austin Puchera, We chose one winner for this category. This is so much fun, it's the most suspenseful winner. <laughs> I never know who's going to win. And the winner is Jared Wayne Rose. Send the senior award. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm here at doing one of the awards because we have more than one award at the senior level, and so uh, we have a committee. It consists of Professor Terry Pettiton from Psychology, Professor John Meharry from Mathematics, <laughs> and me from Physics, and we chose the senior winners for the Undergraduate Academic Excellence Award, as well as the Maynard Award and the Mount Award that I'll be describing in just a minute. So, uh, I ask you to hold your applause on these until all the names have been read. So we'll give applause one time after all the names have been read. <laughs> So, 19 senior students met the eligibility requirements for the Undergraduate Academic Excellence Award in the senior category. 17 of those <laughs> students were nominated by faculty for the award, and 12 students decided to submit their application material were considered. 
and I would ask that they stand as I read their names. Erika Marie Baker. Callie Janetta Brown, Jessica Gail Creamer, Gretchen Elizabeth Fogel, Tanya Lynn Fogel, <coughs> Carrie Danielle Lee, Melissa Lynn Lester, Deborah Lynn Knoll, Juliana Marie Prince, Rachel Lynn Shea, David Charles Chuck, and Wendy Sue Walker. As with preceding awards, the uh, recipients receive a plaque and $200 toward their next term's tuition. So our committee chose two winners in this category, and they are Jessica Gail Creamer. distant second, and I have to say, this didn't always endear him to the people in Columbus. He's been honored by having a campus building named for him, uh, but I believe that knowing that this award for students is named for him has pleased him as he looks down on us far more because of his dedication to Marion students and education here at OSU. So, uh, in order to be considered for the award, the student has to have a cumulative Grade point average of 3.5. Also, the student must have completed at least 60 hours on the Marion campus by the end of winter quarter 2012 for this year. So students meeting those criteria can be nominated by faculty. The students then must submit two letters of recommendation from faculty, a resume, and any additional documentation the student wishes to submit to support an application such as involvement in honors, a research paper, an honors thesis, that sort of thing. 21 seniors were eligible for this award, of whom 12 were nominated by faculty, and 11 of whom submitted applications. Uh, it's, uh, with all of these awards, I have to echo Mariana, it is really amazing to read the letters that fellow faculty members write on their behalf. And these students are all really deserving of the award. I would like the students to please stand as I read their names. Uh, please ask you to hold your applause until I have read all of the names. So, the students nominated for the Maynard Award are Erica Marie Baker, 
Jessica Gail Creamer, Gretchen Elizabeth Fogel, Tanya Lynn Fogel, Melissa Lynn Lester, Deborah Lynn Noel, Nanny <coughs> Lynn Rush, Rachel Lynn Shade, Wendy Sue Walker, Sherry Benito with White. Gretchen Elizabeth Fogel. It's not too much to say that he was responsible for the growth of the regional campuses and our continued success in raising expectations for students and for faculty members. I worked a lot with John uh, over the years, and his dedication to the regional campuses was total. This man was committed, and amazingly so. He, well, you'll, you'll get a chance to meet him uh, in a little bit. So I'll tell you just a little bit else about him. Besides being vice president for regional campuses, he did all kinds of interesting things. He was involved with the 4-H club, and he is a member of the 4-H club hall of fame here in Ohio. He and his uh, late wife Ruth received the Volunteer Philanthropist of the Year Award from Central Ohio chapter of the Association of Fundraising Professionals. He is a veteran, having served in World War II in the Navy, and uh, he was a student at Ohio State, and then he left to go to Madison, but he came back to Ohio State afterward <laughs> as an assistant professor, and he just did all kinds of things before he retired, gosh, it must be 30 years ago now. I don't, it's been a long time, John. But uh, John is dedicated to Ohio State University and dedicated to student scholarship and it is entirely appropriate that this award is named for him and the students who have been nominated for this award should realize what a great honor it is to be nominated for an award named for John Mount. So uh, in order to be nominated, the students um, had to be nominated by Marion campus faculty. They also had to meet the same criteria, a uh, grade point average of uh, 3.5 or higher. And um, they had to submit two letters of recommendation from faculty, at least one of which came from someone on the Columbus campus because the Mount Award is for someone who begins on the regional campus, transfers to Columbus campus, and achieves the bachelor's degree. So uh, they are also asked to submit additional documentation such as research paper, honors thesis, and that sort of thing. Uh, 29 seniors were eligible for the award, and three of them were nominated by faculty and submitted application material. Uh, those people, please rise when I read your name, and please hold your applause until all three have stood. Miriam A. Gadon, Diana Marie Luckman, and Iman Tiba.
The winner of the John Mott Award receives a $1,000 award and a plaque. The winner this year is Iman Tiba. And we are very honored to have John Mount here to uh, present some awards as I try to put the so-called tree back up. John, can you say a few words, please? Young ladies like this, young men 
those who have known on this campus and graduated from here, you'll be doing it again. Those who started on campus, yes, and got their degree in Columbus, now attorneys and doctors and dentists and teachers, and you name it, and then in all walks of life. And I hope that there's an excellent archive here that keeps track of all those who have done before. If those who recognize tonight, you will be saying, now in my day. <laughs> and, and let me just say to you, as I join here, I would conclude by saying that um, this is heartwarming to see how far we've come. How far we've come. Yes, in more than 50 years, 57, I was there. And, and it's a joy to see What's happened here on the stage under leadership, Dean Rose and the faculty, staff, and especially the community, the Maryland community, those donors, those people who give time and talent and dollars to make this campus where it is as a part of the Ohio State University. And I think it's some will recall. Now in my day, we talked about one university. And a regional campus had every privilege to be proud of me at that one university, the Ohio State University, and the pursuing excellence recognized tonight and will continue. God bless you all, and I'm so happy to be alive to be here in my name.
Thank you to Mr. Dent and the other members of the chorus. An Associate of Arts degree from The Ohio State University is available only on the regional campuses. Students are eligible for the Associate's degree, the Associate of Arts degree, once they have earned a minimum of 90, 90 credit hours, 50 of those being in specific course categories. Between spring 2011 and winter 2012, there were 114 students on the Marion campus that had been awarded an Associate of Arts degree. An additional 34 students are candidates for the degree this current quarter. I will now turn the podium over to Dean and Director Greg Rose and Associate Dean Bishun Pande to confer the Associate of Arts degrees. Melissa Lim Redding. Sarah Elizabeth Rice. Brandon Renee Riglo. John William Smelter. So go ahead and 
squeeze in. We got a lot of people coming to the stage. We're gonna have a quite the chorus. We're gonna have to squeeze in a little bit more, so one more row in front. Don't be shy, come on, go in front. Thank you again and congratulations to all our winners. Good night.